not only we're trying to make the first comic book animated movie, and that's a style all of its own, but we also try to do that differently for every character from a different universe. And so there's uh, several different characters from uniquely different universes, and we wanted each of them to have a completely different language. Miles is the center of this universe that we created, so he, we sort of used as to establish the look of the film. All of the techniques we developed really were to make Miles look great, and what Miles looks like, somewhere between a hybrid of like 90s and 80s comics like not quite the modern printing techniques that they have today because we wanted to take advantage of screen tones. So we wanted to limit the palette. We wanted to limit the amount of textures. We wanted the textures to be really graphic. Spider-Gwen was similar like aesthetic universe as Peter and Miles. They're both from different universes, but their rules of physics are in the same wheelhouse. So how we moved her wasn't wildly different from how we moved Peter and Miles. It was more trying to feel as earnest and sincere and lean into nothing nostalgic, make it as recognizable as possible. Then with Noir, he is a gritty, gritty dude from the 1930s serialized comics, black and white. I like this idea that the comics back then, they weren't printed with the same fidelity that even in the 80s and 90s, that the comics that like we sort of based Miles' world on. You could print black and you could print white, and the fidelity you could get, like your dots had to be really big, and we just made him a lot more simple in terms of his rendering technique. Penny Parker is from the distant future, and in her world we decided that that's going to be a very anime-influenced world. And anime isn't just one thing, just like a comic book isn't just one thing. That's a whole genre of different styles. So we would pick and choose our, from some of our favorite animes and cater that to the performance. So sometimes for more action things, we'd have a wildly different style from how we would do when she's delivering a sentimental line. But she, we made the choice that she's a wildly more limited character and, and just like an anime, when she's just delivering dialogue, it's as minimal and simple as possible. She's one of my favorite characters actually because she was such an experiment and we kind of just jumped in full steam ahead with her and sort of figured her out in scene and in characters and I think it was a slam dunk. And then Ham, who's my favorite alt-universe character, I thought he was just such a great opportunity because he's such a silly character. And I think the more I leaned into how silly he is on a story level, like the less we tried to explain him, the more we made him a cartoon. And his reality is sort of almost unlimited because he is a cartoon. He can like float through the air if he wants to. He can defy any law of, of nature he wants to, as long as it's funny. You know, he just follows the rule of any great cartoon. As long as it's funny, he can do it. And so for that reason, I wanted him to be rendered as much as I could, like a 2D cartoon. And I think, again, they found ways to, to take the techniques we were developing and just keep developing them a little further to get those looks. The biggest challenge there was we would change the character's proportions and designs. Like a, a splash page would be in a comic book. They're all part of the same illustration. Depending on the scene, there's even some scenes where they move as a group. In the dorm room when they're on the ceiling, they all kind of a little bit more respect Ham's <laughs> rules of, of, of motion just because that's what's better for the joke in that scene. More often than not, it was just design, design, design. How much can we make them feel like an illustration, even if they're illustrated by different people?